Welcome back to Halloween Haunts, 365.com, the podcast. I'm Jared. Hi, I'm Terry. Today, we're going to do something fun and take a look at a movie that doesn't get as much love as it deserves. The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, based on a true story. Let's get to it. This movie was fun, but there is one scene I hated... And I think a lot of people hated it, and that's why it doesn't get the love that it deserves. Yeah. But overall, it was a creepy movie with a kind of a different kind of story. So let's uh, let's get to our Jimmy advertisements Jay. first. Jimmy J, Friday the 13th Minicon, with Brian over at Horror 365. Let's go. Friday the 13th weekend, May 13th and 14th. It is all going down right here on the grounds of the Blairstown Diner. Lauren Marie Taylor, Ron Milky, Ron Sloan, Debbie Voorhees, Tracy Savage. I mean, we have a lineup of guests coming out for the weekend. And not only are we celebrating Friday the 13th, but we are celebrating 13 Fanboy. And with that being said, we have the lead actress, Haley Greenbauer herself, making her way to Blairstown. This is history in the making, folks. Get your tickets now. F13 Minicon. That eventbrite.com. That is F13 Minicon. That event right.com Jason Jason's here early folks like I said it's gonna be a killer weekend in Blairstown going down at the iconic Blairstown Diner be a part of the history in the making we'll see you there all right looks like a really fun time Yes, it does. I don't think they should use Minicon anymore. I think it should just be the Friday the 13th convention on Friday the 13th from the original filming location. Crazy. Good idea, you guys. It's a really good idea. It is. So, like we said earlier, we got some more. We got Haunts opening. You know, the Barrel Haunt channel. So let's get over to the Field of Screams, which will open May 13th and 14th. Brighton Asylum is also open. We have video coming soon, but let's get to feel the screams. The original Field of Screams. I love it there. I know. It's such a good time. Excited to see what they do for Halfway to Halloween. Excited to get the Brighton for Halfway to Halloween. But we got a thing in our way. And that is The Conjuring. The Devil Made Me Do It. Fun movie. Interesting movie. It was. I don't think it was the best Conjuring movie, but I still liked it. Based on a true story. Well, they're all based on a true story. Yeah. Well... Depends on what you consider truth, but yeah, let's do it to a point. <laughs> ha. The Conjuring: The Devil Made Me Do It, released June fourth, twenty twenty one, directed by Michael Chavez. Chavez, my apologies. A budget of thirty nine million with a box office of two hundred and two million. Six point three out of ten IMDb, fifty six percent Rotten Tomatoes, and fifty three percent Metacritic. We have Patrick Wilson as Ed Warren, Vera Famiga as Lorraine Warren, Rory O'Connell as Ar- Arnie Johnson. I don't know why they gave the whole name, but okay. 
Sarah Catherine Hook know. as Debbie Gla- Glatzel, Julian Hilliard as David Glatzel, John Noble as Father Kastner, Eugene Boon- Bonderart as Isla the Oculist. Oh, Eugene E. That's a weird name. <laughs> Ocu- <laughs> Occultist. There we go. See, that's Occultist. too much uh, optical in me. <sighs> Shannon Cook as Drew Thomas, Ronnie Jean Blevins as Bruno Sauls. So, let's get into the plot. In 1981, demonologist Ed and Lorraine Warren document the exorcism of eight-year-old David Glatzel, attended by his family, his sister Debbie, her boyfriend Arnie Johnson, and father Gordon in Brookfield, Connecticut. During the exorcism, Arnie invites the demon to enter his body instead of David's, Ed witnesses the demon transport itself from David's body to Arnie's while he suffers from a heart attack and is taken to a hospital in an unconscious state. The following month, Ed wakes up at a hospital and reveals to Lorraine that he witnessed the demon enter Arnie's body. She sends the police to the Glatzel household, warning them that a tragedy will occur there. Arnie and Debbie return to their apartment located above a kennel where Debbie works. After feeling unwell, Arnie murders his landlord, Bruno Sauls, by stabbing him 22 times due to his demonic possession. I got it. With the support of the Warrens, his case becomes the first American murder trial to claim demonic profession, possession as a defense, resulting in the beginning of an investigation into David's original possession. The Warrens later discover a satanic curse passed on through a witch's totem and meet with Kastner, a former priest who previously dealt with the Disciples of Ram's cult, as we know, created Annabelle. Correct. (coughs) He tells them that an occultist had intentionally left the totem, resulting in the creation of a curse on the Glatzels, causing the possession of David. The Warrens traveled to Danvers, Massachusetts to investigate the death of Katie Lincoln, who was also stabbed 22 times. Detectives have found a totem at the home of Katie's friend Jessica, who is missing. Lorraine initiates a vision to recreate the murder and discovers that Jessica had stabbed Katie while possessed before jumping to her death off a cliff, which allows the detectives to recover her body. The Warrens travel to the funeral home where her body rests, and Lorraine touches the corpse pan to help find the location of the occultist. Lorraine, in a vision, witnesses the occultist attempting to have Arnie kill himself, but stops her just in time. Lorraine is threatened by the occultist, and she tells Ed that the connection works both ways. The Warrens return to their house in Connecticut to investigate further. Drew reveals that he has found a book of... Strakeharian witchcraft, which states that for the curse to be lifted, the altar used by the occultist must be destroyed. Ed is affected by the curse, a totem being discovered in a vase of flowers delivered to the house, but is stopped by Drew when attacking Lorraine. When they realize Katie attends nearby Fairfield University, they begin to assume the occultist is operating in the area. Lorraine returns to Kastner for help, and he reveals that he has secretly raised the daughter, Isla, or Isla. 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 In violation of the requirement of clerical celibacy in Liza? the cap. No. 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 Uh, Elsa. I, Elsa. We'll say Elsa. In violation of the requirement of clerical celibacy in the Catholic Church, as he researched the occult, Is- Isla grew fascinated in later blooming becoming the occultist. Kastner tells Rain that Isla's altar must be the in the tunnels underneath his house, leading her into them before Isla finds him and kills him. Ed soon arrives and finds his way into the tunnels through a locked drain hole with a sledgehammer. He is briefly bewitched by Isla and attempts to kill Lorraine again, <laughs> but she forces him to recall the time they first met reminding him of their love. Ed regains his senses and destroys the altar, saving himself, Lorraine, and Arnie. Isla arrives at the broken altar, only to be killed by the demon she had summoned after falling to complete the curse. Failing. 
to yes. complete the curse. Thank you. <laughs> Ed places the cup from the altar in the artifact room, along with the Valak painting and the Annabelle doll. Arnie is convicted of manslaughter, but ends up serving a sentence of only five years, marrying Debbie while in prison. Ed shows Lorraine a gazebo like the one in first they first kiss. Very cute. All right, so the one scene that I can't stand in this movie is when he saves her from flying off the cliff. Why is that yeah. in there? there it, that it wasn't was so needed. Fake. It was fake. It looked bad, and we know it didn't really happen. So let's get to the scores. Oh, the devil made me do it. So, for the podcast out there, scores, cast, five blood splats. Great job. Especially Arnie. I liked Arnie in this. I do, too. Fear, a three. Nothing real horrifying. You kind of saw everything coming. Special effects, a five. Especially the possession of the boy and the exorcism in the beginning. Fantastic scenes. Um, score, a four. Could have been a little better. Plot a four, like I said. I mean, it was good. So. Uh, the occultists being under there, a lot of stuff didn't line up, but four is good enough for me. So overall, it gives us a four. Now let's move on to um, the Terry jump scares. <laughs> She jumped twice. Yeah, I did. Yep. I remember. All right. So favorite scenes. Mine was the blood, blood shower. shower. Holy shit. That was creepy. Um, the exorcism scene with the boy with him contortioning all over the place. Yeah. He was um, bending different ways. Yeah. Very weird. Windows blowing out in the prison. When um, Arnie was in there and he's levitating and all the windows blow mm -hmm. out towards everything. Cursed Ed chasing Lorraine. That was kind of funny. That was fun. I laughed. Um, the devil worshiper being killed by the demon. That was quick and easy. Snap, 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 snap. And then haunt scenes. Pronounce claw marks. Now, I know there's claw marks in some haunt scenes, but these are dug into, like, the wood trim. It looked like a bear attacked that fucking wall. That was cool looking. A blood shower. You do that off to the side. A little shower. A little blood. A black magic room. An occultist room. Yeah. With, a, with the table. Table and like a seance. Yeah, I think that would fit great in haunts. Alright, let's get into the production a little bit here. Not a lot in production. No. I mean, it's all just dates and times. Because the same people came back. Filming began on June 3rd, 2019 in Atlanta, Georgia. It was filmed in Atlanta. That's pretty cool. Huh. All right, let's get into fun facts. Although the legal proceedings were not shown in the case, the judge of Arnie Johnson's trial rejected the defense plea of not guilty by demonic possession, stating that such a defense would be impossible to prove, also stating it would be a relative and unscientific to allow testimony in support of possession defense. The jury were not legally allowed to consider the, the demonic possession defense, and Johnson's lawyer then in Instead, argued self-defense. Johnson was found guilty of first-degree manslaughter on November 24, 1981. Johnson was sentenced to 10 to 20 years in jail, but only served five due to good behavior. Him and Debbie Gladstone married when he was in prison and remained so until her death from cancer, cancer short after the film's release. Wow. Hmm. 
Lorraine Warren, played by Vera Farmiga in the Conjuring movies, died a natural death age 92 on April 18, 2019. She had been a head consultant on all of the Conjuring projects and an avid follower of the series. I the, didn't see that. Yeah. The Glatzel family had two other sons not depicted in the film. Alan, age 14, and Carl Glatzer, Glatzel, age 15. Glatzel Jr. has denounced the Warrens as frauds and stated that his brother David <coughs> actually suffered from mental illness. The working title of the movie was plainly The Conjuring 3. However, later it was changed to The Conjuring The Devil Made Me Do It as a direct reference to the infamous 1981 Arnie Johnson trial. When Father Kastner says that he prefers to keep his satanic objects locked up in the basement, like keeping guns off the street, Ed and Lorraine exchange a meaningful look. Because <laughs> Ed and Lorraine do the same thing. Yes. James Wan remarked that with The Conjuring 3, they wanted to get out of the haunted house setup, which with, which was the subgenre for the previous two films. And it does take a major turn. I didn't think about that, because they're, they're yeah, kind of hunting for it. someone. <laughs> this is the second movie about the Brookfield murder that happened in 1981. The first was the demon murder case in 1983. Vera Farmiga, who plays Lorraine Warren, described the experience of returning the play of the character as coming back to the family. She further joked, I love working with this guy, referencing to her on-screen husband and close off-screen friend, Patrick Wilson. And you can tell that they like working together. This was actually released during the pandemic, remember? Yes, it was. We, we watched it on HBO. It's one of the reasons we got HBO Max was for this movie. Yes. And then we kept it because it's amazing. It. I forgot about that. Oh, I didn't know. Crazy times. In Arnie's bedroom at 1312 into the movie, inside the cinder blocks is a nun figure that resembles the nun from the previous Conjuring movies. Oh, I gotta go back and look at that. I, yeah, I don't, never noticed that. James Wan did not return to direct the third installment of the franchise. Michael Chavez took over as director as he had previously directed The Curse of La Llorona. Oh, I wonder why Wan didn't want to come back. Huh. Well, that really wraps up the fun facts. pretty cool pretty cool movie i enjoyed it i think i enjoyed the beginning more than the end the exorcist then the yeah. guy get knocked out then demon transfer the but the waterbed scene was cool as shit which paid homage to uh night around elm street four mm -hmm. yeah when uh joey was having his wet dreams <laughs> Yep. That's what he said. I know that's what he said. Well, guys, that's all we have for you from the Conjuring universe. It was a fun ride. It was. I didn't hate any of them. I think the worst one was probably La Llorona, and I think the best one was the original Conjuring. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So tell us what you guys liked about this series. We don't. We're not sure where we're going after this. I don't know if we're gonna do haunt stuff or movie stuff with the main podcast show. We have talks about doing just haunts for the podcast and then movies for the short splats. Yeah, but we'll see. Um, make sure you like and subscribe in one of the corners. Oh, and you guys didn't check out my latest of the collection right there. <laughs> the VHS tapes. They're sealed. It's beautiful. It's so great. Well, that's all I have for you today at Halloween Haunts, 365.com, the podcast, where every day is haunt season. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.